Good morning, Woodman here. This is our Grand Rising morning message for Monday, May 27th, 2024, which also happens to be Memorial Day in the United States. Uh, we thank those who have served for protecting our freedom. We've seen and heard about wormholes from watching science fiction, and I want to talk about what they are and whether there's anything out there in the science world that could perhaps work to create them in a way that we can use or study or get closer to as a uh, concept, right? Wormholes are hypothetical structures in space-time that act as shortcuts between two distant points in the universe. They are derived from the solutions to the Einstein field equations in general relativity, which describe how matter and energy influence space-time curvature. The concept of a wormhole suggests that it is possible to traverse from one point to another faster than light would travel through the normal space between them. This intriguing idea arises from the properties of space-time and the geometric flexibility that general relativity permits. Like imagine, you know, it takes you maybe certain million light years to get to another point, but you could cut that down to, to seconds, right? The simplest type of wormhole uh, known as the Einstein-Rosen bridge was proposed by Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen in 1935. This solution connects two separate points in space-time via a tunnel-like structure. However, this type of wormhole is unstable and would collapse too quickly for anything to pass through it. The mouth of a wormhole can be visualized as a black hole and a white hole connected by a throat. The black hole acts as an entry point where the objects fall in and the white hole is the exit where objects are ejected. However, the white holes are theoretical constructs that haven't been observed in nature. Uh, some also talk about maybe the idea of maybe two black holes being adjacent to one another, even possibly creating a wormhole. For a wormhole to be traversable by humans or spacecraft, it needs to be stable and large enough to allow passage. Theoretical physicist Kip Thorne and his colleagues explored the possibility of stable, traversable wormholes in 1988. They concluded that maintaining a wormhole's open throat would require exotic matter with negative energy density, a substance that would counteract the natural tendency of the wormhole to collapse. Exotic matter isn't known to exist naturally, but certain quantum effects, like the Casimir effect, suggests that negative energy densities can occur in minute or small amounts. The concept of exotic matter is crucial because it would need to provide a repulsive gravitational effect to keep the wormhole's throat from closing. Without such matter, the wormhole would collapse almost instantaneously after forming, rendering it useless for travel. This requirement makes the practical creation and maintenance of a wormhole incredibly challenging uh, as the amount and type of exotic matter needed are beyond our current technological capabilities, or at least to our knowledge. Um, there may be people out there who believe in ancient Egypt that uh, uh, aliens had visited and that maybe they have the technologies. But all that's kind of speculative, but this is what we're being told about time and time again, is that there are things in ancient Egypt which defy our conventional understanding. If a stable traversable wormhole could be created, it would revolutionize space travel by allowing instantaneous journeys between distant regions of the universe. This could enable exploration and colonization of far off planets and stars, effectively bypassing the light speed limit set by special relativity just don't you know i'm not all for colonization i'm just talking about what the potentials would be and how maybe certain governments of the world would view it depending on now the ends of the wormhole and how they're manipulated they could potentially allow for travel not just in space but also in time leading to uh, paradoxes and challenges to our understanding of causality itself Despite their theoretical allure, wormholes really may remain highly speculative at this point. No empirical evidence supports their existence, and many physicists regard them as mathematical curiosities rather than f 
physically realizable objects. Quantum theories of gravity, such as string theory or loop quantum gravity, might provide further insights into the nature of wormholes and their feasibility. Until then, wormholes remain a fascinating topic of theoretical research and a popular element in science fiction. You know, it's going to take a lot to really kind of almost make space kind of be folded in a way that you could just really just jump from one point to another, um, you know, light, light years away. And, you know, that's, that's, it takes a lot. Like, we, we you know, to us, they will be able to defy, you know, what we see in our everyday, um, day-to-day as, as to how things work. So the challenges of stabilizing a wormhole, creating exotic matter, and the lack of empirical evidence keep uh, these wormholes right now in the realm of speculation. However, continued advancements in our understanding of quantum mechanics, as well as general relativity, might one day provide more definitive answers about the nature and practicality of wormholes. The idea of generating microscopic black holes at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, and the potential for them to create a wormhole is a fascinating concept rooted in very advanced theoretical physics. Let's go into the details of how this idea might work, right? Because you got this Large Hadron Collider that they're using to study a lot of different events in science. And the fact is, it does create these little tiny microscopic black holes. So let's go further into that as to how what that could mean for our wormhole. Microscopic black holes, um, you know, could lead to other dimensions, right? In other words, in high energy physics, um, like those involving extra dimensions, like string theory or brain world scenarios, it might be possible to create microscopic black holes um, at the energy levels which are currently being achieved by the Large Hadron Collider. These theories suggest that gravity could become significantly stronger at very small scales, making the formation of black holes more feasible in these high energy particle collisions that are going on continuously in the LHC as as science studies these collisions and what things are are observed. Um, Creation and detection. If microscopic black holes were produced in the LHC, they would decay almost instantly. I think it's about... 10 to the negative 27th uh, power in seconds, Uh, this burst of particles, this rapid disintegration would result in a distinctive signature in the detectors characterized by an unusually large number of particle tracks. Detecting these events would provide indirect evidence of extra dimensions and new physics which go beyond the standard model, right? What about these Einstein-Rosen bridges we talked about earlier? Right, um, those theoretical passages uh, through space-time connect two separate points, and so in classical general relativity, a wormhole requires two mouths, right, openings, right, connected by a throat, which could be visualized as two black holes connected back to back. However, forming a stable wormhole requires exotic matter with negative energy density to prevent it from collapsing, something that we don't currently have being generated in our LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. So there are going to be challenges for this to lead to something that we might actually be able to observe as an actual wormhole. Uh, Because with microscopic black holes that are being produced in the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, uh, for that to form a wormhole, we're going to need a lot of speculative conditions that need to be satisfied according to scientists. The black holes would need to align and interact in a manner that allows for the formation of a throat connecting them. Secondly, even if such a structure could momentarily form, maintaining its stability without the exotic matter needed to keep it uh, lasting longer and stable uh, remains a significant theoretical hurdle. Uh, The theoretical models uh, predict that any such microscopic wormholes would be extremely unstable and they would collapse almost immediately. And so that's not going to be effective for us because we need it to not collapse right away. We need it to stay open longer for us to be able to then test the effects and see that we've achieved quantum gravity and and wormhole stability, which is what will be needed to travel through it. So the stability that involves quantum gravity effects are still not even being fully understood by our scientists at this point. You know, things like quantum foam suggest that space time at the smallest scales could be extremely turbulent, making stable wormholes unlikely. 
and you know other speculative models propose that under certain conditions quantum effects might allow for transient wormhole like structures but these ideas still remain theory in the minds of scientists and we have not been able to test these things as of yet right um there are a lot of experimental limitations here which is that the lhc and other particle accelerators can reach high energies but creating and detecting the phenomena like microscopic black holes or wormholes are at the edge of or perhaps even beyond uh, our current experimental capabilities the formation of such exotic objects if possible would require not only unprecedented energy levels but also incredibly sensitive detection me mechanisms that would be able to observe these fleeting events so it's, it's going to take some time and i don't know that we have the technology right now to really observe that and study that uh what about the theoretical and practical implications well if microscopic black holes or wormholes were to be detected it would totally revolutionize our understanding of physics as we know it potentially validating theories involving extra dimensions as well as our understanding of quantum gravity however the practical implications of creating stable wormholes especially ones large enough to be of any practical use such as for travel or communication are far beyond our current technological and theoretical reach which is really a shame in summary yes there could be a theoretical possibility that as our large hadron collider is, is having all these collisions that microscopic black holes could form within the lhc um, and so that possibility exists and it would definitely provide insight into extra dimensions and new physics the idea is that these two black holes could align to form a stable wormhole is at best a thought experiment and it's fraught with, with numerous scientific challenges things that we can't get beyond at this point the creation and stabilization of an actual wormhole that we would be able to find useful um, with quantum gravity just is not has has not yet been achieved by us and so this remains within the realm of theoretical exploration rather than imminent experimental reality but never say never and you know i i'm a man who does believe in god i'm very spiritual i believe that there are things going on in dimensions all around us that we don't know and that we don't understand that are invisible to our naked eye we always assume that everything that we see with our eyes and hear with our hearing and feel with our senses that that's all that exists in the world around us but that's not necessarily the case for example there may be things that are there that we can't see with our five senses because our five senses aren't meant to pick up those things so there are things that are beyond our realm of understanding which is very hard because unless we can make it something that we can observe in some way using our five senses then a lot of it just remains very speculative so the fact that there may be spirits all around us we just don't have the capability to see these spirits but i'm not going to say never say never i mean there are obviously people around the world who have different um things about them that they're able to notice things that other people cannot like people like mediums who are able to connect to and talk to spirits of passed on loved ones things like that you know we don't know what goes on in their minds we, we're not living their life so if in fact these mediums are true and i think they might be we can really kind of imagine that with a little bit of more um, uh, faith and, and, and speculation we might very, very well be able to understand that they, there could very well be beings out there, right? That are looking down on us, that these beings are existing in say like the fifth dimension. And all we know, I mean, I think when we go to the fourth dimension, it becomes like a tesseract, right? All we know is, is that we can't observe it because we are in the third dimension and we are limited by time. But if you can imagine these beings in other dimensions, they would be able to look down on us. They'd be able to look through us. They'd be able to see very various, various states. Like they could see me when I'm a young child going to school. They could see me later on in life when I'm getting a job. They could see me later on in life and after having children and raise them. You know, all of that would be completely visible to them because they're at higher dimensions and they could see everything from like overhead and imagine that. and. I'm just asking you to imagine that the idea that someone could look into our universe and see exactly what's going on because 
they exist in a higher dimension. We'll never be able to see them, but they could very well see us. So there's a lot out there that we don't know. And I would say never say never. Let's not close the book on wormholes. Let's, just, let's not say, well, you know, that, I don't know. You know, there's a lot we don't know, right? Like, for example, if, in fact, uh, aliens were visiting uh, ancient Egypt or, you know, we get a lot of reports lately that the U.S. government indicates that there has been um, um, contact with other species, you know, people that have visited Earth and how they got here and what, what they used to get here, you know, they may have some of these answers. But, you know, again, until we actually have the concrete proof, until we have something that's documented, a lot of this is going to be denounced as just speculation and imagination. I hope this message was helpful for you. I hope you like, share, and subscribe. I hope you continue to enjoy the support. I, I, I continue to enjoy your support of this channel. I'm really tongue-tied today. Um, thank you very much. Have a great Memorial Day. Um, thank you for all those who have fallen in service for our country. Uh, take care and have a great day. Bye.